Hi, welcome to another edition of The Recap. I am Jermaine Hatton and today we are going to look at the poem South by Kamal Braffitt. Kamal Braffitt is a Barbadian, or we are accustomed to say a Bajan, and he beautifully encapsulated the Caribbean experience and how much the Caribbean people, when they travel to developed parts of the world, for example, the Northern Hemisphere, how much they miss the Caribbean experience, how much they miss Caribbean life. Let me apologize in advance. Throughout this clip, you will hear all sorts of songs, uh, birds, roosters, sheep. For some reason, I think today is a bad day for recording because the Caribbean experience is, is haunting me right now. The life in the country is haunting me. Nonetheless, let's have a great poem. Enjoy. South by Edward Kamar Braffitt. But today I recapture the island's bright beaches, blue mist from the ocean rolling into the fishermen's houses. By these shores I was born. Sound of the sea came in at my window. Life heaved and breathed in me then, with the strength of that turbulent soil. Since then, I have traveled, moved far from the beaches, sojourned in Estonia's cities, walking the lands of the north, in sharp slanting sleet and the hail, cross countless saltless savannas and come to this house in the forest, where the we who are born of the ocean can never seek solace in rivers. Their flowing runs on like our longing, reproves us our lack of endeavor and purpose, proves that our striving will thunder in that. We resent them, this wisdom, this freedom, passing us toiling, waiting, and watching their cunning declensions down to the sea. But today, I would join you, traveling river, born down the years of your patience as flowing, past pains that would wreck us, sorrows arrest us, hatred that washes us up on the flats, and moving on through the plains that receive us, possession in tumult, come down to the sea. Bright waves splash up from the rocks to refresh us, blue seashells shift in their wake, and there is a thatch of the fishermen's houses, the path made of pebbles, and look, small urchins combing the beaches, look up from their traps to salute us, they remember us just as we left them. The fisherman hawking the surf on the side of the reef stands up in his boat and eludes us. A starfish lies in its pool, and gulls, white sails slanted seaward, fly into the limitless morning before us. So the poem started by saying, but today I recapture the island's bright beaches, blue mist from the ocean, and he goes on. This is a good example of imagery. Braffitt is showing us an image of what he's remembering of the Caribbean. Yes, the word recapture tells us he's recollecting or he is imagining or he's remembering, remembering what used to happen when he was in the Caribbean. Right, and he goes on to tell us more about that image, the image of what the Caribbean life is about. Life close to the sea, life close to the ocean. And he says he is rolling into the fishermen's houses, shows how closely the Caribbean people are to fishing and to getting food from the sea. All right, and he goes on to talk about how much he was born by this sea or close to this ocean and he says the sound of the sea came in on his window who tells us how much he depended upon the sea for a survival how much he depended upon the typical caribbean setting for a survival and at that point he says he felt so alive he said life breathe and heed heaved in me and he talks about how much he enjoyed living around that setting there. He said, with that strength of the turbulent soil. He goes on to talk about much more of what used to happen or what he remembers so vividly from Caribbean life. And then and a contrast is painted for us. He goes on now to show us the contrast between the idyllic beauty of the Caribbean life and that of 
developed world or that of the northern hemisphere so i painted the picture i put the picture there on the right for you to see a little representation of what the world look like looks like i it's not moving the way i wish for the people to actually be moving it's moving uh, north to south but i would have appreciated if the diagram was actually showing south to north because i want you to get the idea that obviously Kamal Rafit was moving from south where the caribbean is in the middle there if i can get my cursor there to show you Yeah, so the Caribbean is somewhere around here, well, all around there, and he's telling us how much at that point there, when he used to live there, it was so nice, and the Caribbean experience was so good, and it felt as though life was everything he wanted. For some reason, he moved to North, and actually, if we get to know the history of uh, Braithwaite, we would know that he didn't move to North America, but he actually moved to Europe. We are still taking it to mean the northern hemisphere all right and when he got there he said what he moved far from beaches so it tells us immediately that there weren't as many beaches around where he was in fact probably there was none and for some time he, he felt as though he was sojourned and sojourn is a, is a powerful word because the word shows us that even though he might have been young when he moved to where he was now, north, he still knew that the movement was a temporary one. So he said it's, it was sojourned in stony cities. So the word stony tells us, and I want to look at it as development, that the city or the place he moved to was very developed. And we're going to take this form of development to mean, I, I quite rem I remember vividly that we talk about concrete jungle. And yeah, that's the same idea he's talking about there. Felt as though he was in a place where he wasn't seeing nature much. All he was seeing is stones or, or large buildings. And he says what? He was walking on the land of the north where sharp slanting sleet and the hail. Now that tells us a little bit more about what the, the temperature, the, the weather was like. We know in the Caribbean that we experience rain every now and then. We are not accustomed to, to hail and sleet and all of that. So when this character moved, when the person moved to a place such as North, and he starts experiencing this for the first time we can just begin to imagine how he felt really he goes on to talk about how much he crossed countless saltless savannas and comes to this house in the forest now i think kamal is exaggerating here because uh we cannot really imagine many uninhabited lands up north Right. So I think he wants us to get the idea how barren, how plain, how different this new place was to what he was accustomed to. So I think it was a little exaggeration there to get to the point where probably he wants to let you know that he moved very far away from where he was and how much it's different from what he used to know. And he says he comes to the house in the forest where the shadows oppress me. And that there is an example just like above of what? Personification. Good job. So personification there where the shadows oppress me. Of course, the shadows are not human, so they cannot be oppressing someone. They cannot be keeping someone down. But it gives a good picture because probably i'm gonna insinuate here probably braffitt is talking about not just the shadows obviously but maybe he's talking about the people up north because remember he's moving to england and england europe has a, a history of colonizing the caribbean people and then he says what he says the shadows oppress me he might very well be talking about the people of the north that oppresses him that oppressed rather him and how much he disliked them right and he says what 
and the only water is rain and the tepid taste of the river again he is bitterly remembering what used to happen when he was in the caribbean and now this is the the the, the level he was brought down to and this is what he has to endure sad there but let's really look at our devices here we see the opening there with the beautiful imagery and imagery is painted throughout and then we see the personification there life heaved and breathed in me uh, he's showing us there of what used to happen how excited he felt how uh, alive he felt when he was living in the caribbean and when he moved it shows us how depressed he was he says the shadows oppressed him i am taking that to mean that when he moved to the place he moved towards probably remind him of how Colon, all these same people here colonized the Caribbean and made slaves out, out of his um slave, out of his ancestors. All right, so that's an interesting part there. First stand, first two stands of the poem. Let's move on now. The third stanza starts with a beautiful line that says, We who are born of the ocean can never seek solace in rivers. We see a direct change there from the first person, I, 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 to we, to probably hint that the poet is not the only one that might have moved. He says that we who are born of the ocean, to hint that there might have been other persons who moved from the Caribbean or from south to north that probably to develop themselves so he says we who are born of the ocean can never seek solace in rivers to mean that we who are accustomed to the ocean life or to life around the caribbean cannot be comforted with small things like rivers and he goes on to say the rivers and using a simile here the river is being compared to our longing he says what the flowing of the rivers is like our longing and you know when rivers are formed they take some amount of land with them so he's comparing that there to the longing of people people's longing to be better people's longing to be successful and he's hinting to that there he's saying they reproves us our lack of endeavor people when they don't really know much about us they when they're ignorant to us and probably he was faced with that when he moved to north He's saying that they would find our character as lacked, lacking endeavor or lacking purpose. And that's, that might be somewhat contradictory to what we have just talked about. But he goes on to say, we resent or we dislike this kind of wisdom or this kind of freedom. They find themselves free, but we are accustomed to... A better life we are accustomed to life in the caribbean we are accustomed to large open fields we are accustomed to large open seas and oceans and we cannot accept this kind of freedom all you know is your forest all you know is this little river here or the rain we are accustomed to the taste of river of the ocean we are accustomed to the playing in the ocean or to see life in the ocean when i say life in the ocean i'm talking about the seagulls that was mentioned also about the fishermen that uh, thrive on life or, or, or livelihood from the ocean so it tells, tells us how much he resent or how much he disliked this kind of freedom they consider themselves free or they consider themselves wise but this kind of freedom is nothing compared to that of the caribbean so again he's contrasting life of north with life of south the south that he was accustomed to and he's saying that they they might be watch watching their cunning declensions down to the sea probably hinting to the fact that when they came to colonize the caribbean or when they came to colonize the southern parts of the world they were moving from rivers to oceans and they probably experienced for themselves what life of the ocean or what life around the ocean might have been like and perhaps they liked it <laughs> and he says what but today i will join you traveling river hinting to us that you know why he has accepted the fact that this life here is not the life he wanted and he wants to move on going back to where he was from initially and he says patient is flowing and it's telling us there how much yes he wanted to be better but he realized that 
after some time he had to move on he had to go back to what he was accustomed to so patient yes he was patient because he endured what he had to endure but now it's time to go back and while he's going back he's remembering the pains that can wreck us the history of colonization sorrows arrest us hatred of course the hatred that comes with that remembrance there so it's all there talking about how much he's traveling back to the Caribbean life he's traveling back to the life he knows and the life he adores all right says bright waves splash up and blue seashells talking about there of imagery showing us a picture of what he missed of the Caribbean life so now that he's he has returned he is looking at all of this and he's remembering he's feeling at ease but he's recapping and he's also remembering that life he used to have when he was living there a very long time ago and he's so excited about it he even says and look small urchins and he's there that that's a lot a lot there it might seem significant it might seem insignificant to some but that that small thing appears to mean so much to the poet here and he says what they salutes us and of course that is an example of personification they're not going to salute but it just appears that even the small animals the small organisms welcome or the small organism appear to be friendly to this poet or to the persona and it gives us the idea that caribbean people are so full of life or are so friendly and when it goes back to north you see an example of contrast here when he goes back to north he talks about how much they were oppressive and how much the shadows oppressed him and how much he was alone alone in the in the the house and the forest so gives a good idea there of contrast contrast of the idyllic beauty of the land and the friendliness of the caribbean people and the friendliness of the caribbean atmosphere but it also paints a picture of what he used to know or what he missed by or what he missed from this caribbean experience that he now is enduring and it goes on to talk about how much the fisherman uh, salutes or halloos him and that j just goes to show the friendliness of the caribbean people and he's saying what flies off the birds fly off to the limitless morning before us and limitless is just beautiful description because he's telling us how much the idea of the sky might not be an end the idea of the sky or the idea of the caribbean life is limitless the idea of the caribbean life is bountiful anything can happen there is so much scope for development there is so much scope for beauty there is so much scope for remembrance and all of this here is encapsulated beautifully in fly into the limitless morning before us before us meaning that not he is not the only one that came back but other persons came back to admire what they used to know the caribbean life and it shows us how much we might migrate for betterment and lack, lack of a better word or we might migrate for self development but we all would come back to this point here where we admire the place we once called home so we have looked at south by kumar Braffitt, and we can see that the themes we can use to summarize what is going on in the poem is migration uh, we can also talk about patriotism desires dreams places the desire of wanting to experience caribbean life again the desire of wanting to experience the open sea the open ocean again or the dreams of having to experience that and the places of course you can see direct contrast between the kind of places that the poet has experienced once he talked about the braveness or once he talked about the open atmosphere of the caribbean life and then he went to talk about the depression that he might have reached when he went to the northern part of the world northern hemisphere when he went to the stoniest cities and when he went to the small house in the forest where he felt that he was being oppressed by even the shadows if you can talk about any of these in your exam you can link the poems any of these uh, themes here and anything else your teacher might have taught you that is all the time we have today if you've listened to this to the end congratulations i can see you're really really 
studying assiduously and you want to file these exams. So I'm wishing you best of luck. Go ahead and like this, comment, let me know what you might want some clarity on, what you might want to see me do next. Also, you can subscribe so you can get updates on what the next poems are. Um, go ahead and share this with your friends so we all can pass these exams together. Alright, best wishes in your exam and thank you very much for listening to the recap.